If you like putting shrimps on Barbies, then you're weird as schnitzel, but hey, up next is Australia, so you might just fit in, sir. That is correct, a nation that can easily be formed by colonizing the Australian continent. Australia has an insanely beautiful flag, but what we're really looking into is their national ideas. Starting off with shipbuilding time and global settler increase, you can get up to minus 15 dev cost reduction, making this one of the best playing tall nations. Not only that, but you also get extra colonists, manpower, infantry combat ability, and marine force limit plus 10%. What that means is that we have the insanely great marines to disembark and do naval invasions wherever we please to. We also get shock damage, plus 10%, and construction cost, which mix in with the dev cost is the perfect combination for playing toll, as playing toll end of the day is all about building the right buildings and developing the provinces you want to develop. Not only that, but if you're lucky, you can even get gold in the provinces of Australia. I mean, who hasn't heard of the famous Launceston gold mine? Am I right? Yes, it's nobody heard of this. So if you really want to form a playing toll nation, definitely go for the nation of Australia. Yodeling its way from the south of Germany is the nation of Bavaria. Formable by one of the three starting nations quite easily in the early game, Bavaria is definitely a master of playing toll. Not only does it have some pretty great playing toll national ideas that include development cost, discipline, and even production efficiency, but it also has the best available lands in the Holy Roman Empire. In fact, most of the Bavarian lands in the south of Germany are either farmlands or grasslands. And to top it off, we have quite a considerable size of cloth provinces and very high price goods such as paper, glass, and even some gold right next to you. In fact, you have two gold mines right next to you. Aside from that, the Bavarian mission tree also gives you the ability to play super tall whilst at the same time acquire a variety of subjects around you. So if you do feel like yodeling, why not do it as one of the Bavarian miners? Hey, get off my porch, because up next is Texas. Was that too much? Was it too much, guys? Well, in any case, we did start as the Spanish, because historical go burr. In order to form Texas, you need to have four provinces within the Rio Grande area, which is this big area here, as well as you need to actually have your capital here and to have Admin Tech 10. Booyah! We're gonna go for the new traditions and ambitions and Daria go the Texans are here. That means we got morale of armies plus 15, fire damage received minus 10%, and heretics and heathens do not give any penalties. That is a massive idea onto itself. Plus fire damage plus 10, goods produced, movement speed, and land attrition together with army tradition decay. A lot of people don't realize how important the army tradition is, as well as dev cost minus 10%. Essentially, Texas is a mixture of a a good fighting nation as well as a super tall nation you don't need to have too much provinces to get super recognized and scare all of your neighbors out all you need is a fort named the Alamo that random people gonna be quoting hundreds of years later but seriously though one of the main aspects that makes Texas so great is aside from the fact that you can play tall as them the fact that you also can colonize the rich gold mines next to you early on or better yet take from the natives and you might even get some of your very own gold mines if you're lucky enough. Not only that, but all of the tobacco in the south and the cotton plantations give a lot of extra minus 10 dev cost. So mixing in all of those dev cost reduction bonuses, you can essentially dev up your provinces for very, very little. This next nation is quite a spicy one, if you know what I mean. As I am talking about Bahmanis. Nope, not Bahmanis. Hindustan. In fact, forming Hindustan done is really easy because you don't need to have tech 10 or tech 20 or anything of the sorts you just need some specific cities so if you're willing to snake to these cities you can really form it very early on in the game once you do form it go for the new traditions and ambitions and as you can see we have the best Indian traditions and ambitions available we got national manpower discipline governing capacity infantry combat ability and advisor 
fire cost as well as development cost and land fire damage plus 10%. Not to mention minus 5 years of separatism so it's gonna be a lot easier keeping the Indian subcontinent in check. You will definitely struggle with your admin points however if you go for this so expect to be a little bit behind for a few years but eventually it will catch up. Hindustan also has some insanely great missions. So once you finish the Bahmanis or whichever other nation that you start as as missions, then you can switch over to this and get a ton of modifiers such as the minus 10 tech cost until the end of the game or tolerance of the true faith as well as massive amounts of claims on Persia, the entire Indo-Chinese Peninsula as well as Burma and so on. Hindustan is a great playing toll, formable nation, but it is also a great playing wide nation so you do have the option of choosing between the two of them. If you're in your 20s and 30s and are European, then you're gonna love this next nation. I am of course talking about the nation of Siam. But wait, we're not Siam, we're Ayutthaya, what's happening here? Well, Siam can only be formed after the 1650s if you follow the mission tree that Ayutthaya starts with, but there's a workaround to that, namely the Laos escape. Basically what we do is we conquered all the Lao culture provinces here, that means all of Lanshang, and we have 50% Lao culture in our nation, that means we're gonna make this our primary culture, then we go to our decisions, restore Lanshang, know on the traditions and ambitions, and afterwards as Lanshang, if we have the provinces required, namely 20 provinces in the Indochina Peninsula, as well as the provinces of Ayutthaya, Sukhothai, and China, then we can form the nation of Siam pretty much 300 years early. Now we go for yes please traditions and ambitions and look at these amazing ideas. We got morale of armies, manpower and discipline, idea cost minus 10%, reputation plus 2, cavalry, fire and cav combat ability which means your cavalry units are actually more than amazing in the early to mid game, minus 10 dev cost, Diplo annexation cost, minus 20, tech cost as well, minus 10%, as well as absolutism with legitimacy plus 1. That is correct, the CME's ideas are likely the best ideas added in the 1.31 Leviathan update for Europa Universalis 4. So if you want to form CM, you can form it as anybody in Asia, as long as you culturally convert first to Lao and take the rest of the provinces needed around to switch over to CM afterwards. So what are you waiting for? get your backpack and head on an adventure towards Siam. One of the most obscure formable nations that doesn't normally get formed is New Zealand or Zealandia as it is called in U4. Zealandia offers a wide array of ideas including diplo relations and colonists, heretic and heathen provinces do not give penalties, goods produced, dev cost minus 10, shock damage which is obviously caused by the mighty Kiwi armies, global settler increase which is great if you are a colonial nation such as probably the nation that forms Zealandia, morale of armies plus 15 and another diplo rep plus 2. Not only that but forming Zealandia gives you the insanely beautiful flag and color of barf. Yeah I said it, I said it. So next time you ask yourself why is a Coptic Bornean, Sunni Bornean and Protestant Maori advisor walking in a bar? It's because it's probably from uh, Zealandia. Up is one of my personal favorite nations and one of the few nations that has a horse on the flag, I am talking about Hanover. Restoration of Union against the Great Britain. Wow, wow, we wow. I thought we're playing tall here. We are, we are. Calm down, everybody. Hanover is definitely the best nation to play tall as in the Holy Roman Empire alongside the Netherlands. In fact, because of its strategic position, whichever nation you decide to start as in order to form Hanover, you always have access to the lowlands so you can actually change your trade capital to the lowlands and filter in all that Lubeck trade in here. With that you're likely gonna get hundreds of income within the first hundred years and will be able to field hundreds of thousands of troops. 
The Hanoverian ideas are really great with discipline, construction cost and trade power abroad, development cost reduction quite early on, state maintenance, fire damage and maintenance reduction, goods produced plus 10%, diplo relation and fire damage received alongside the previously mentioned fire damage given, makes Hanover not only a great playing toll nation but also a really scary to mess with nation. Having access to all of the great Netherlands and North German parts means you get access to all of this amazing cloth as well as the other really high cost provinces such as the paper, crystals and so on. Because of its location you also can go colonial a little bit later on if you want to join the English and the Castilians or if not you can go for a German Empire unification run. Whatever you decide to you definitely will have the economic power to fulfill it. So kick that humor out the door and play a little bit as a Hanoverian. The nation that nobody expected on this list but which definitely grizzlied its way in here is Alaska. For all of you who didn't even know this tag exists, you can form Alaska in U4 and aside from the fact that you have a super cool flag and everything, you do have the most insane national ideas imaginable. You have great naval ideas with morale of navies plus 20, light ship combat and heavy ship combat ability, dev cost minus 15%, settlers plus 25, core creation cost minus 20 with fire damage plus 15, tolerance of heretics, naval force limit plus 25 and sailors as well as prestige. Aside from the insane ideas, what else does Alaska give us? Well, you have a very high chance of getting gold mines once you start colonizing this part of the world and the most insane part is that you can form this very easily easily as one of the starting daimyos or if you want to anybody else in the East Asian and even the Russians have a chance of forming the Alaska nation. By annoying natives you can also convert to totemist which is not even joking the strongest and most overpowered religion in U4 as of 1.31 because of its specific mechanics. So picture this insane ideas totemist Alaska fighting off against the world. I guess the only thing that could make this better is if they found oil in a few hundred years. Am I right? Our next nation offers about 700 development in just 20 provinces. Who can it be? Why of course it is the nation Tuscany. Tuscany's got some of the most impressive ideas in the Italian peninsula starting with minus 10 dev and ending up with plus 5 discipline as well as idea cost and tech cost minus five mercenary maintenance interest per annum prestige and trade efficiency with production efficiency as well as manpower in fact I can even develop Shiwa for five mana points per development and I can even get this down to four mana points per development we have hundred and twenty income as well as a land force limit of hundred and twelve from just twenty provinces that is because we definitely definitely devved up these provinces like crazy and because of the Genoese trade node being so insanely good as is the Venetian one as a secondary end trade node, Tuscany doesn't even need to get any bigger to get any stronger, albeit taking the north part is mandatory and if you get a vassal in Milan or Savoy or whichever nation lost course to your enemies is a great idea for expansion. The Tuscan missions are literally the same as the Florentine mission and the Tuscan ideas are the same as the Florentine ideas so essentially if you start as Florence you don't really even need to form Tuscany unless you just do it for the amazing color and flag. That being said you can form Tuscany as any nation as long as you culture convert to Tuscan as your primary culture which is why this nation is on our list. Later on you can even form Italy or restore the Roman Empire if you want to and you are going down that path. So grab a pizza and start your very own Tuscany game. Next on our list is a nation that definitely defies the laws of playing toll as its very own people are some of the tallest in the world. I am of course talking about the Netherlands. Oh wait, hold up a second. This is not the Netherlands? Have I been lied to? Netherlands. Oranda. Wait a second. 
Hollanda. Hollandi. Oh, it's all good, guys. It's it's uh, Nederlander in Armenian. I guess we can fix this by actually forming the Dutch nation. The Dutch have a super great position within the English Channel, which is definitely the strongest trade node in the world and can maintain that very easily. You also have some insane ideas, starting with a mix of naval ideas as well as trade and economic ideas. One extra merchant trade range, development minus 10% as well, marine force limit, land fire damage and siege ability, and most importantly, you have some of the best trade goods in your region. It is in fact ridiculously cheap to develop your provinces, and you even can do the land reclamation in Holland, giving you minus 25 dev cost. In Amsterdam, through the power of developing your nation, the Netherlands can field hundreds of thousands of units and still have a super great economy so the next time you're wondering what nation you should be forming to play toll why not holland into netherlands